Hello, Altakama here with a hat because I have a ginormous bed hair that I can't get rid of. And I thought it's better to make this video than not make this video, so here I am with a hat. Today I thought I would make a starring artist tag that's going around YouTube since that seemed like a lot of fun to do. So uh, without further ado, here we go. Question one, what is your favorite experience as an artist? I would have to say that it's this right here, right now, you, me, talking, well, me talking to you and us getting to talk down below. So I'm painfully, painfully, painfully introverted but I'm 38 and this year I just decided I'm gonna stop fighting being an introvert so we get brought up in this society being told that introversion is really really bad and detrimental and almost treated like an illness and we all should be extroverts and making friends and stuff 500 friends on your friends list on Facebook and stuff and I spent 30 at least 30 years of that 38 years trying to get myself to be that way and beating myself up for not being that way and I just decided you know what what happens if at least just one year I stop beating myself up about being an introvert and just embrace it what would my life look like and one of the things was I stopped doing like really weird marketings that, that you get taught on marketing courses that felt really wrong to me. I've never felt comfortable in just, hey, look at my arm, blah, blah, blah. It just feels icky to me. And so I let go of all that. And what that did was create a breathing space for me to actually go, ah, okay, what actually goes with my nature? And my answer to that was YouTube and sharing stuff I've learned about art and stuff I'm learning about art at the time and then I love sharing that information and so I would say that without art I wouldn't have had anything to share with you guys that was a really long way of answering your, that first question this is gonna be a really long video question number two what's your least favorite experience as an artist I don't have a least experience favorite experience what I can talk about is becoming an artist and running an art business has been the hardest thing I've ever done in my life and I have a PhD that was easy compared to this stuff so it's but I wouldn't call it my least favorite experience because I've enjoyed it every single moment of it and I've learned so much and I've, I really thrive on learning new things and problem solving so for me it's definitely not my least exp favorite experience it's just like wow it's it's been a huge learning curve it's definitely been my favorite thing I've done with my life so question number three what are your dreams and goals for your art can I be practical like I know YouTube's supposed to be like inspirational stuff, but honestly, my goal with my art is to be able to earn a full-time living. That I don't need accolades and awards. I just want to be able to find a system in which I can just keep on doing this perpetually and just enjoy it. What's your favorite medium and why? Definitely watercolors followed by acrylics, I think. The only ones I won't do is anything with a strong smell. This in my best friend in my art studio, <laughs> my gas mask and I've, I've been seeing wearing this quite a lot because any solvent based stuff, even just using alcohol in making effects on watercolour, I have to wear this. I'm so, so sensitive to alcohol. I got very sick <laughs> taking, um, I don't know if you guys have night nurse in your country but in the UK we have a, a medication called night nurse for your cold and we didn't realize it had like i think about 18 percent alcohol in. so there was me coughing my lungs up i'm dying so out of desperation my husband gets me this thing so please try this because it really helped me i did and like 10 minutes later i was just like collapsed on the floor couldn't even get out because the alcohol got to me before the medication worked and i was being very ill for a long time so I have to be really careful with solvents, so I would never, you would never see me using 
like uh, or really getting into solvent based things so there's a lot of art that I can't do that I would really love to like uh, encaustic art is definitely one of those things that I would love to because I love the shellac the, the burning off shellac effect that you get but there's no way I could work with that so it's quite sad but no my favorite medium is definitely watercolors and I just, I just it's fascinating and I love it to pieces Five, what inspired you to do art and why do you love it? I think there's two different questions so I will answer it separately. The first is what inspired you to do art? So I haven't led the stereotypical, oh I've drawn all my life and I went to art school and I have a, a master's in fine arts and I've, I always knew I was going to become an artist. No, completely opposite. Until I was 36, I had no idea I was going to become an artist at all. I spent all my adult life pursuing a academic career in computer science. And I, yeah, like I drew it as a kid. And then, you know, the, the world gets to you and you stop drawing and you start learning algebra instead. And you, yeah the typical story of how you don't become an artist. So how I did actually somehow end up becoming an artist was my husband and I decided that it was time for me for us to travel so we saved up all our money and saved up enough to travel the world for I say technically three years but year and a half of that was spent in Japan the other year and a half was spent on the road traveling to across the world and what ended up happening was every city we went all we'll do is we'll go to art shows and art galleries and art museum we saved all this money for years and we, we planned the biggest chance to go wherever we want and we keep ending up in art shows I think I like art like just titchy tiny bit so I said, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go, but it wasn't like, it wasn't really through my encouragement. I think the people around me was more encouraging than I was about making art. So that's how I actually got into art. I think there was a second part to that question, which is why do you love art? I love colour. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed, I'm a colour monster. So being able to spend all day just playing around with colour is really fun for me. And also I have bipolar and bipolar has like this manic phase and depression and I've not yet found something else besides art that I can actually do regardless of where my bipolar is. A lot of stuff I can't do if I'm manic or if I'm depressed. And this is the only thing that seemed to agree with my body and with my the way my bipolar is so that it can kind of coexist with each other. So yeah, that is to me that is a sign that art is for me. Number six. What's the favorite piece of art you've ever made and why is it special? Watercolour wise, I think it has to be this. I'm not sure if you can see it because of the reflection. Yeah, there's a lot of reflection. But that is one big piece of about a one size watercolour painting of the sea that I did with uh, masking tape. No, with masking fluid. Your biggest art influences. Van Gogh. I have been to many cities to cry in front of a Van Gogh. I don't know what it is about his paintings, but when I stand on in front, of a real painting of his, I cry. I'm clearly not into fashion, but I love Alexander McQueen and I love one of his quotes when he was talking about how he went into Givenchy as their new creative designer and he started cutting, cutting up clothes and everyone was like horrified that he was cutting up these expensive pieces of clothes with just a pair of scissors with no plan at all and he went, don't worry, it's it's just clothes and I love that like I try like I was just like mind blown like world changing paradigm shifting thing happened when I heard that and I have now have the same attitude towards that or I try to which is like either it's just paper that I'm messing around it's just paint that I'm mucking around with it's just 
a painting I did, it's, it's no biggie. And that has lifted so much weight off my shoulders. So he's like my spirit animal in my art. Just for that simple attitude of, don't worry, it's just clothes. Egon Schiller for his lines and distortions, I love that. Art Nouveau, I love uh, the, I've always loved the curves you get from Art Nouveau. I think Shadi from Sadie Saves the Day was talking about the Art Nouveau furniture room in Orsay. I've been there, it's amazing. Um, I actually stood in there until closing time one day when we were living in Paris for a month. I went to the Orsay many, many times and just drooled over everything because amazing, amazing, amazing. Happened to have a Van Gogh exhibition at the same time. Oh my God, like how lucky was that? In terms of Scottish artists, Jolomo and uh, Scott Nesmith, they are both Scottish landscape artists and they use really bright colours and I just, yeah, I love their style. What did you learn from being a full-time artist? That I can take on so much more than I thought I ever could and like when I finished my PhD I thought wow that is like the peak of my life and I learned so much and blah 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 and just like you know when we're 18 and we know we think we know everything well having an art business was like okay no that was like down here compared to what I'm doing right now and it's interesting because I thought it would be an easy life and I think a lot of people would think running an art business is easier than uh, doing a PhD but no, it's really not. Not only am I learning to create art, I'm learning to become an artist which is slightly different because I feel like being a full-time artist is a different ball game to being a part-time or hobby artist and that's not to say one's better than the other or anything like that, it's just different and then you also have to take care of the business side you have to learn about websites and which isp is best uh spoilers there are none just go to squarespace we're not sponsored by them but go to squarespace anyway we transferred to them like a month ago and it's been the best thing it has lifted so much headache over my head and marketing and copywriting and packaging and shipping and customs and taxes and laws and so I have definitely learned that I can take on more range like a bigger range of stuff than I thought I ever could before so that's been a really really good lesson for me. What do your family and friends think about you being an artist? 99% of the times I think my friends and my family believe in me and believe in my art and support my art way more than I do. It was a surprise at how, just how supportive and how far my family and friends would go to support me in this journey and I have been touched and been deeply grateful for their generosity. My mother, she has been the biggest surprise because I thought she was gonna hate it because she has always pushed me to have academic career achieve high in academia and that's all that matters and I became an artist she's like I've been waiting for you to become an artist I was like what like a memo like <laughs> like decades ago like like you know by the time I got into art I was 36 I was like I just spent 36 years trying to like get academia stuff so that you'd be pleased with me and now you tell me you've been waiting for me to <gasps> Yeah. <laughs> so she was way more supportive of me becoming an artist than I was about myself at the time. My husband has been amazing. He has been the, a critical part of this whole shebang from traveling the world with me to go and see the art and helping me in every single aspect of um, my art business. I ha and you know, I have friends who have like just insanely kindly put together art parties at their homes for me to be able to show art and sell my art to their friends. Like, which has been like, oh, you do that for me? 
you know I was just so touched so I am really really fortunate and I feel like my friends and family knew I was going to become an artist and I should become an artist like definitely more than I did and I kind of feel a lot of the time that my friends and family believe in my art more than I do on a daily basis <laughs> So yes, I'm very, very fortunate in that. So thank you to my family and friends who have been wonderful to me. Okay, question number 10 was becoming an artist your childhood dream? If not, what is? So as I said earlier in the video, no, not at all, not until I was 36. So I was a late starter, so um, becoming an artist was never a thing that even came onto my radar of life career choices at all. And um, so the question of what is, well, I always had a creative side in my life and I've always had a scientific side in my life and I've always needed both to be happy and healthy, but I've always taken the academic side or the scientific side as my career path and the creative side as a hobby. So my first like career dream was to become a theatrical lighting designer. Um, I've, with, through a quirk of sequence of events, I somehow managed to get myself into theatrical lighting at school and I was lucky enough to go to National Youth Theatre and there was a chance for me to go to the Royal Academic of Dramatic Arts to do lighting because at the time they were looking for a student who's into lighting that could speak Japanese but that didn't pan out because my parents wanted a more academic life for me and I can totally understand why they did that because I think when you're 15 your parents really do want you to have as much security as possible rather than the unpredictable world of theatre and in a way I'm really grateful that they did because I don't think I would have enjoyed a lifetime in the theatre so that was my first one and then Apollo 13 came and then I wanted to work for NASA I knew I couldn't be an astronaut because I wasn't physically fit but I was like yes I'm gonna work for NASA and so I went to UCL in London which is University College of London to do planetary science and then my grandmother died like a week into my um, first year and because she mostly raised me I just fell apart and yeah I basically left that course and then I started in computer science and I, I, I got stuck there for many, many years <laughs> doing my bachelor's, my master's and my PhD and then I became an artist. Question number 11. What advice can you give to people who want to be more artistic or creative? Follow what you love. Like, if you love certain colours and it's not the, like, the commonly accepted colour for a tree, just use it anyway. That's your style. And I find that the eternal question of how can I find my style is just about following what you like and what you want instead of what everyone else says there should be. And so just becoming more honest about, oh, I like this, oh, I don't like this, regardless of what it might cost in terms of relationships around you is really important if you want to become creative. Because the creative journey is all about that. Is like connecting with what interests you and the first step to that is becoming more honest and more vocalizing about oh i like this oh i don't like that question number 12 were you supported to pursue art as a child yes and no like both my parents were weirdly creative but in a oppressed way so i was encouraged to draw but I was also pressured to do well like if you're gonna draw you're gonna draw well and if you're gonna not draw you're gonna not draw well <laughs> kind of thing so I would always say that my mother is the biggest inspiration and the biggest supporter for me becoming creative but she was also the biggest block 
like emotional block to me getting there in the first place that's kind of like the role of the parents like they want to support you but they want security for you and it's it's a hard job and i admire parents for taking on that job because no matter what you do you're going to mess up anyway and it's a it's you know a thankless task for many many years until they finally grow up and actually be grateful for everything you've done so parents you're amazing you keep doing what you're doing question number 13 do you make money off your art yes i do i have a online shop link down below i'm also going to be reopening my etsy shop hopefully in the next week or so um which is going to be more towards art gear and art supply that is a bit of a secret at the moment. I've been eternally grateful for the fact that I have always managed to sell some of my art, not like a full-time living, but I have certainly sold at least like a thing, a painting or a necklace or a something most months since I started being an artist, which is really really lucky and that is entirely through the support of my family and friends who have bought these pieces from me and for people who have found me on social media and have generously bought pieces from me so thank you to you guys. I exist as an artist entirely because people have really kindly believed in me from the beginning. So thank you, thank you so much you guys, you guys are amazing, I love you. Question number 14, what do you want to improve on, aspire to be with your future art? Just keep going, 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 just keep painting, just keep painting. Basically because I am on a self-taught journey and I'm quite, you know, I'm, I'm only a year and a half in, so I'm really at the beginning of my art journey. So I just want to keep going. I just want to keep learning. I just want to keep taking courses and learning different styles and learning new facts and tricks and techniques and applying it to my art because it's great fun to see how like each course I do affects and influences my painting style. In what feeling do you try to express in your art? If I had to pick a theme in my art, I think somehow, not like consciously, but it always ends up being about how how my bipolar is feeling or how I feel about having bipolar. It's, it's always around mental health because bipolar isn't my only mental health condition. Quite often, like if I'm feeling manic, I have to get that manic energy out out of my head and onto the paper and if I'm feeling depressed that sadness I try to paint that out of me so that it's no longer in my body and this is why I say that art has been the best thing for my bipolar and for my life is because it's it has now given me a way to direct the very self-destructive life-destroying energies of mania and depression and put it somewhere else that is not destructive or at least not destructive to my life you know i might destroy paper or painting whatever but it's no longer destroying my life in an active way and instead i am creating something from that energy so that i don't suffer it as much so i think if i had to pick something then that is what i'm trying to express when i'm painting what is your favorite thing to paint and why two things one is abstract because i love playing with colors and just seeing what colors will do with each other when they meet and 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 create new colors and shapes and stuff so abstract is definitely um my favorite thing to paint my second favorite is flowers and that is purely because my mom loves flowers and uh, when I don't paint flowers, she's so sad. And you know, as a daughter, I just want to make her happy. And uh, she she loves it when I paint flowers. And what adult child don't want to you know make their elderly parents happy by just doing simple things like that? So yeah, flowers is definitely my second choice. Question number seventeen: What is the strangest thing you've painted? I don't think I have one. I mean, like some people find abstracts 
strange <laughs> and hard to understand but like I haven't particularly painted anything that is strange just because I don't paint anything figurative and like with, with a theme and stuff like that so no I haven't painted anything that strange have you ever been hung up after you started the commission and how did you handle it uh, no because on the whole I do not take commissions so if you want to commission a painting from me thank you I'm very very touched that you'd want me to do that but I cannot take that on for the single reason that I am awful at being told what to do like I cannot work within someone else's framework and I'm I'm definitely a lone wolf in the way I work, which is probably why I have a gigantic wolf tattoo on my back. Maybe that was a subconscious thing. Hmm. So basically you don't get hung up from commissions if you don't take any commissions. I'm sorry, not a very useful answer. Number 19, do you admit that paint smells good? No. Mostly because I can't handle solvent smells. <laughs> so thankfully watercolour, as I said before, doesn't smell. Neither do acrylic. I struggle with like varnishes for acrylic and stuff, which is one of the reasons why I moved on to watercolour. But I cannot handle solvent, as I said before, and oils and things, so I don't think they smell good at all. What would you tell your younger self? Ow! Okay, that's like, we just like been talking about the surface things and discussions just went down deep. <laughs> I would say that don't see not fitting in as a detriment. Um, and not be afraid of standing out because I've led a life of not fitting in um, even when I was in Japan I really really didn't fit in into the Japanese culture because I've always been different and I can't conform to things and I won't conform to rules and expectations uh, which the Japanese culture really struggles with and will reject immediately if you are refusing to fit in so i didn't fit in there and then i went to boarding school over in the uk and as much as there was nothing racially bad or anything like that at all my friends were lovely i was always aware that i was different from them you know like just small things like the makeup tutorial you read on 17 magazine just didn't go with you because they were not catered to your skin tone and, and features and things. In those subtle ways I was very conscientious that I don't fit in. But then as soon as I started embracing who I really am, life got easier. When I was trying to fit in I was forcing myself to do things that I found difficult to do rather than to do things that was easy for me to do. And my creative coach always said do what's easy for you and that for me was a really scary step because I was like well if it's easy for me it's easy for everyone else right. We all think that apparently and no it is not. Just because it's easy for you doesn't mean it's not special right. And the way to bring your uniqueness out is by doing what comes easy to you because what comes easy to you is what's really hard for somebody else. And as soon as I started embracing that I found art, um, my friends and family were super supportive and my life just kind of blossomed. So don't be afraid of standing out, don't be afraid of embracing who you are and don't worry that you don't fit in. This was definitely as candid as I have ever been on this channel so far. Um, I hope what you found out about me was interesting for you. If you have any questions please ask away down in the comments below because I love chatting about creative life and stuff like that and I know you guys do too. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and we can chat down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!